On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks are reportedly signing Derek Jones Jr. What does he bring, and what does the Mavericks' wing rotation look like now? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks, NBA champions. He is the It's good, and the Mavericks have won the game! We don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it Lockdown Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, be an everyday, or subscribe and follow for free. Just search Lockdown Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, to comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section. What do you expect from Derek Jones Jr. on the Mavericks? curious what people think about that if you want to support the show text us get text alerts from us get text from isaac as he goes to the hall of fame tomorrow subscribe to our subtext click the link in the description also you can text the number in the description below you get text straight to your phone it's a really cool way to be able to connect with us and support the show joining me as always my co-host writer contributor at mavs.com the Derek jones jr journeyman the one more thinking what you got for me isaac harris all right i'm flying out and like eight hours to boston so i need if if there's any locked on mavs listeners bostonians bostonians raccoon squad members in the boston springfield yeah rhode island connecticut the northeast um, in general (laughs) if there's anyone up there and one if you want to meet up hit me up yeah i'm riding i'm riding solo on this trip so uh (sighs) don't remind me well, yeah, I mean, my wife's not going or anybody. I'm just like, all right. But if you have any, the Lord will be with too, you. The Lord will be with me. <laughs> I have the spirit with me all the time. If you have any food, racks, the guitar. let me know. Cause I have like mul- uh, multiple nights free for dinner and I have no <laughs> clue where to go. And I want to go to some cool places. Yeah, I should be going with you, but the, uh, the hall of fame did not approve my credential and I'm, I'm not salty about it, but I am salty about it. So I'm salty for you. They like it felt like they just took like a you know like a, a BB gun and like clo- covered their eyes and were like you're approved you're not approved you're approved you're not approved you you know what maybe it's uh, karma for skipping out on the McMahon pod. Well, you didn't go to summer league with me, so uh, <laughs> I'm just saying McMahon. You know, was hurt that you McMahon was hurt and he did come up to me at the Dirk presser and asked and he said I big timed him, but yeah. He was the one look he was the one talking to somebody else while he while I walked by and then he just like, Hey, you know, I'm 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 gonna see you guys tonight and I was like, Hey, I, I won't be there. I'm going to the Wings game and he was like, Oh, okay, too good for me, too good for me. And then he kinda like turned away and then I went and sat down <laughs> and then I started talking to, to Stein and then he comes over and then it, I, I don't know. He was making a big deal. Uh but then he also said that he only makes fun of people that he likes, so I appreciate that from Timmy Man. Yeah. It's a great story. Amazing, amazing story for me to start the show. Uh, on today's show, though, let's talk about Derek Jones Jr. The Mavericks signed him, and uh, what can he bring to the Mavericks? What will the wing rotation look like, and all that? So we'll get into all that, uh, and let's start here. So the Dallas Mavericks signed Derek Jones Jr. According to Sham Sharania, it's a guaranteed one-year deal. I'm assuming this is a veteran minimum. I think the Mavericks have used most of their. We think they're going to use the rest of their mid-level exception to sign Seth Curry and to, um, you know, to, to, to do Dwight Powell and all that kind of stuff so that they can save that biannual exception for next season. So that's what I assume that this is. Yeah, I think they're a couple million away from the tax, so they'll probably just hover around there. And um, I seen somebody tweet out earlier about, you know, there's, there's a world Kyrie hits a few numbers and gets a couple million dollars in incentives. So they're right around that. Um, yeah, and we also don't know, I mean, What's you know, what other moves you know c- could happen? Is this you know does this make the roster set for training camp? Um, yeah. So the, the roster right yeah <laughs> yeah the roster yeah. the roster right now is set on they have twenty two guys. I think they can bring in twenty one to camp. I thought it was twenty one. So. I was kind of confused. I'm like, all right, well, what's the what's the move here? That, this that's what I'm saying. They have, tw- they have 22 players right now. If we, you know, we've heard Taze Moore, Jelly Walker, Greg Brown, Joe Wisecamp that we talked about, 
and uh, Dexter Dennis is reportedly also a training game invite. So unless a trade, a, a two for one type trade happens, or they can take more than twenty one now with the new CBA, but I don't think that's the case. I think they can take twenty one. So well, maybe yeah, one of these other one of these training camp doesn't have like these training camps aren't all official. That's why we keep saying reportedly and uh, yeah. like we well, got to use that because it's not all official yet. Because, like, you look at a team like OKC, don't they have, like, 22, 23 people? Yeah, well, they got to make right. moves. Yep. Yeah, so it, it doesn't technically matter that much until it gets to training camp, you know, and the Mavs are releasing the roster and, and like, all that stuff. So The other move that could be done is we know, listening to Tim McMahon yesterday on this show and listening to a lot of people this offseason, J- JaVale McGee's not part of their plans going forward. He, he's – Maybe not on the roster to start the season. So maybe they wave and stretch him. Maybe they just wave him. Who knows? So he could be the one that's out, and they're assuming that, all right, if he's gone, then, all right, we have our 21 now. Yeah, that's definitely a route. I mean, it's not ideal to, you know, wave and and stretch his contract there, but uh, it wouldn't be that big of a cap hit, but still, it's not ideal. And you'd have to really – is it worth, you know, waving and stretching JaVale to bring in a guy – you know, the, a 15th, you know, man that is barely going to play at all. I don't know. You got to be really confident on who that 15th man is. Well, and, we would know who we know who they are. Oh yeah. Well, it would be one of these like training camp guys or like maybe they find somebody else on the scrappy or maybe it's, you know, XM or Derek Jones jr. Like maybe they're already con- those considering those guys. Yeah. But Derek Jones jr. Um, he can dunk. There you go. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, Jones, you know, he's, he's still just 26. It feels like he's been in the league for a while. Um, you know, he's 26, he's athletic, he's long. Um, you know, he's kind of like this mix of, you know, wing slash big. He actually has some pretty good, like pick and roll numbers. Yeah, he does. Um, for me, this is just a depth signing. It's like, okay, sure. You know, I, I saw the notification and I read it and I just kept on doing what I was doing. Um, <laughs> Because it's just, I think it's depth. I mean, I think there's a reason why a guy who is super athletic and can jump out of the gym and all of that has, you know, been on four teams in seven years in the league. And I just, yeah. So I think it's a depth piece. I agree with you. I think it's also a depth piece, but I think he's more of like a ninth to 11th type type man than he is a, um, then he is like an end of the bench, 15th, 14th man t- type guy. And now you can dress like he's all. He's not Theo. I, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think he's Theo. I think he's more of, of what we saw from maybe Frank Nilakina or somebody like that in the past okay. in, in that kind of spot. Because like you said, six, 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 11 wingspan. He doesn't shoot well from three, but he's found, he's found ways to be productive for some of these teams. I mean, listen to the, I, I thought he was more of a debt piece until I looked at his minutes. That he's played the last couple of years. Last year for the the Bulls, were about like a 500 team. He played 14 minutes a game. He was the 11th man for them. Year before that on Chicago, they were 46 and 36. They were a, a good team. He was a 10th man, played 17 and a half minutes a game for that team. Found, found a really good role there. Year before that on Portland, who were essentially a 47 win team on a shortened year. He played 22 and a half minutes a game. He was like their ninth in minutes. Year before that on Miami, who was like a 49 win team that year. He played 23 minutes and that was, that was their ninth in minutes. So like he's found ways on good teams, playoff teams in three of the last four years to to carve out a role for himself. And I think he'll be able to, to find something like that. And I think there's an interesting conversation about him and Omax and the wing rotation that we want to have a little bit later, but I'm, I'm a little bit more excited about Derek Jones Jr. Looking at that and seeing, well, he found ways to play for Billy Donovan and to play for, you know, Eric Spolstra and a play for some of these coaches. So there's got to be something that he's bringing to the table. And so coming up, let's talk about what he brings to the table. What does he actually do on the court? We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel has you covered for everything when it comes to betting on sports. You can go and bet for the, for the football season right now because you want to bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. If you are a believer in the Dallas Cowboys, Oof. God help you. You've you've lived you've lived a life and you are just a believer. You're one of those that you look at your friends and you believe that 
even though you you know they're not going to make that deadline, you you encourage them that you are. You're going to do it, man. Like you're going to get it. You're going to get that date with that person. <laughs> you're the you're the always encourager, always believer. But if you do, you're going to get bet you're going to get a benefit from it. So, go and put a, a bet down on that team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. You'll benefit from that the whole season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use those bonus bets on all kinds of things on FanDuel. So go visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, being an everydayer. Appreciate each and every one of you for listening. Again, if you didn't listen to yesterday, we had Tim McMahon on from ESPN. Ben McMahon, great stuff. Isaac asked him some great questions about everything under the sun his answer about christian wood must be heard by by every mavericks fan it's a requirement if you want to stay listen to this pod yeah and you ask us about christian wood you gotta listen yeah to that. you gotta go listen to that first uh let's talk about some things that Derek jones jr will bring on the court i think he's a really i think he's a good defender you look at his you know defending the pick and roll over the last couple of years and defending specifically defending the pick and roll ball handler on synergy they have these ratings and it goes from excellent to poor and last year for Chicago, he was excellent guarding the pick and roll. Year before that for Chicago, he was very good guarding the pick and roll. Year before that for Portland, he was very good. And then for Miami the year before that, he was listed as average. But he's been very good at guarding those. And we've been talking about the Mavericks need a point of attack type guy. And this is another option they have now to bring in to try. Yeah, I think you're a little bit more excited about his like potential. Def- I think he he is a good defender, and I think he can switch and stuff. I don't know if I'm like rolling Derek Jones Jr. out there to like guard points a lot. Uh, his length and stuff. This this is the difference between like him and like I hate to use Theo because we love Theo and he's a friend of the more than I hate that. Um, but to use some of these end of the bench spots on a guy like Derek Jones Jr. This is right up my alley, okay? Because yeah. I always want to use these spots on wings that you can bring in like a Derek Jones Jr. But I, he can defend and defense some... Crap. Just oh, throwing stuff in your own house. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm as confident to say like, hey, Derek, go out and lock up the points there for 15 minutes. For 15 minutes a game even, you wouldn't... You wouldn't try like throw him out there. I, I, think I don't think he's gonna play. What what I think the Mavericks are are doing with with these guys, and I, I like it, is they're taking some they're taking flyers on some of these guys that, that yeah. could potentially find a spot. They're looking for their ninth, tenth, eleventh guys. They've got the two rookies who could find their way. You've got Rashawn Holmes as one of those. You have uh, Jaden Hardy probably as as one of those that, that could find some minutes, and we expect to Dante Exum. Derek Jones Jr. Like you, you're just trying. Can can two or three of those players be solid, like actual rotation NBA rotation players, right? Like you're you're just trying to find which one. And I wouldn't be surprised if Derek Jones Jr. becomes one of those. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to come down to you know what you said earlier about the Omax stuff. And I mean, I'm on a riot early on if he's playing over Omax. But do you know who the head coach is? <laughs> I have to apologize um, that you felt that he should have played more. That was about Reggie Bullock, Isaac. Yeah, I, I don't I just don't expect him to play much at all. I don't early on. I don't expect him to be in the rotation. I think it's a hey, if an injury happens, Omax is out, Maxi's out, and they need another body in there. Cause there's only so many dudes that can play, right? Like Tim's going to play if he's on this roster. Grant Williams can, is going to play. Josh is going to play. We we and, d- we've done this with the rotation though, and you you got Tim, Seth, and Jaden Hardy. Would you not be su- Would you not be surprised if Derek Jones Jr. starts playing over Seth and Jaden because they need defense, and he's one that can come in and bring defense? Like I wouldn't be surprised would be, if Kid does that. I would be surprised. Yeah, I think I would. I would be surprised if he's just if he's consistently playing over Jaden Hardy. There's just kind of two different type of, types of roles because he can't shoot. So like, yeah, that's the pro- you, you it's can, the problem. You, you can only have like, you can only have one of these dudes on the floor. So because then you have two guys, you have he can't play with Dwight. Like he can't play with another big out there who who's who I just can't heard, shoot. I just heard Jason Kidd say bet. <laughs> so it's I'm like not playing. I'm watching just like you guys. <laughs> it's like all right if he's out there then Maxi has to be out there. Right. And so he's playing with Maxi. So it's coming. He's and then all right. 
now he's playing, you know, with Luca or Kyrie. He's playing over Josh or Tim or Omax. And I just believe in Omax's shot more than Derek Jones Jr.'s. And I think he'll have minutes here and there. I just don't think I don't see a path right now for him him to have like consistent rotation minutes. And the problem is it, he yeah, his three point shot. He he's really struggled shooting the ball over the last couple of years. He just, you know, over the last four years of his career, only 31% on 1.8 threes a game. He just doesn't take them. He doesn't uh, He doesn't hit them. He doesn't take them. Like that, It is what it is. But, he's but spe- you know what's appealing, though? Small ball five. Like, that's the one area. For, for me, it's not as much as – I because I think some people will look at me like, all right, who can shoot the three better, him or Omax? I don't think it's about it's that it. for him to find a lane to get into the game. I think it's – who can play the small ball five the best? Because I think there's a world that there there could be some wild lineups that way to where they look at it and say, all right, Powell, Holmes, Lively, you know, if if Max, even let's say Max is in foul trouble or something, they want to throw kind of like their Dorian Finney-Smith lineup they threw out last year yeah. at, at some times, and they throw Derek Jones Jr. out there as the five. Then I could see some stuff like that to where it can get funky and he's playing with Omax or and Grant Williams and, and all of that. Well, you do, yeah, you do Grant Williams and and Maxi and Derek Jones Jr. as like your forwards, and then Luca or Kyrie, and then you know Tim or Seth or another guard, and you can run pick and roll with Derek Jones Jr. We talked about this before yes. that over the last couple of years, according to Synergy, last year for Portland, he or yeah, last year for um, what am I talking about? Chicago, he Chicago. was he was excellent. Year before that for Chicago, he was good. Year before that for uh, Portland, he was excellent. Didn't do it as much in Portland. And then they're not really as much, you know, a pick and roll heavy offense. And then for Miami, he was excellent as well. For Chicago last year, he was excellent and ran at 16% of his possessions. I mean, they ran it a lot. And I mean, he's le- legitimately coming and setting a screen for DeRozan or Levine and then just diving for the basket. Can you imagine the spacing and then having Derek Jones Jr. be the pick and roll guy where, you know, there's not a big guarding Toss him. it up. And then, yeah, and then Luca or Kyrie tosses it up. So I think that's a wrinkle that they can use. And I, I think they'll find something with it, and I think that his his defense will keep him out on the court. Interesting. We need to find like some bet of like who would play, who's going to play more this year, Derek Jones or somebody. Well, this was our wasn't isn't it the Christian Wood Dwight Powell? Was it Christian Wood? Was it Christian Wood Maxi last year? Is the one that we did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, that's what I think. I think just just knowing Jason Kidd, I think if I had the the choice, I don't think I would play him as much as some of the other guys, but. The team needs to get better defensively, and to do that, you've got to play some defensive players, and he's one of them that I could see finding yeah. a role. Yeah. Other stuff. Um, d- the players he defended the most over the last couple of years, I looked at NBA.com matchup data. It's not the best, but I think it tells us the types of players that he's being asked to guard the most. Here's the f- the four players he guarded the most the last four years. Uh-oh. Last year for Chicago. Bogdan Bogdanovich, James Harden, Chetty Osman, Duncan Robinson. So wings, some guys that handle the ball a little bit. Year before that for Chicago, Kevin Durant, Aaron Gordon, Kyle Kuzma, and Bogdanovich. Same Bogdanovich. Yeah. So bigger guys. So he can guard some, some bigger bigs. And that was Chicago who was good defensively. So this is not like a yeah. Chicago team that was struggling. That's a Chicago team that was 10 games above 500. Year before that for Portland, LeBron, Porzingis, Ingram and Harden <laughs> just just throwing them out on everybody. And the year before that, from Miami, McDermott, Terrence Ross, Darren Fox, and Bradley Beal. So you're asking him to guard bigs. You're asking him to guard uh, wings. You know, guards that handle the ball and all that. I mean, he can do a lot of different things. And teams have asked him to do, to guard a bunch of different guys. And, and can you look at the, this Mavericks roster now of like how they're filling it out? Like they could have very well just signed another you know, point guard out there or whoever look at the difference between last year and this year, look at some of the length now that they have on their bench for some like more depth, Dante Axum, Derek Jones, Jr. Grant Williams isn't linked, but they went out. That was their bigger, bigger acquisition defender. They drafted Derek lively. They drafted Omax. Like now we're, now we're starting to look around the roster and being like, all right, we got some size on the wing. We have some length on the wing to our last year. I mean, what were we looking at? I mean, we're looking at Dodo and, and Reggie, and then it's like Tim. Yeah, well, I've got it. So the, the Tim wing and ro- Josh. The wing rotation, the five pl- wing, wing-ish wing players that played the most to start last year, Dorian, Reggie, Tim. I'd throw Maxie in there, and then Josh Green. 
Yeah. And this year, we're going in with Grant Williams, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, Maxi, Omax, and Derek Jones Jr. I mean, you're, you're adding, you're basically I mean, going. I'd almost throw, I'd, I'd throw X him in that too. He's 6'5. So. Sure. Uh, and so you're basically going from Dorian and Reggie to, and then replacing them with Grant Williams, Omax, Derek Jones Jr., and Exum. You're, just, you're giving yourself options. Yeah. And for, for all of those dudes, defense is their calling card first. So mm-hmm. with Exum, Derek Jones Jr., uh, I mean, I guess you want to say dunking for him is their is his calling card, but <laughs> but no, I I just like how they're they're shaping this roster compared to in the past. So like it's clearly sometimes you hear teams say we gotta get better at this or we want to do this, and then it's like all right, well you really didn't like go for that. They said that they wanted to do this and change this, and now you're watching them change that and go after it in the draft. They're going after it and filling out the rest of the roster now. The, the biggest one is the big spot, and they've been active in that. We talked to McMahon yesterday about that, about Aiden and Capella, and they've been very active, and they've they've tried, and they're they're still trying. So that's like kind of the last domino in this that they're still trying to pull off. Coming up, let's talk about this wing rotation. What do we think about it? What do we think about the difference between this wing rotation at the start of the year and last year and all that coming up? I don't believe you shouldn't be here. I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. All right, Isaac Harris. I want to talk about this wing rotation. Because, like I said, you're going into the season with Grant Williams, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, Maxi, Omax, Derek Jones Jr., and Exum. How do you feel about that as a wing rotation going into the season? Uh, I mean, I like it, but it's not incredible. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's better than last year, but... It, you're not looking at it saying, dang, we got a, we got a group, you know, yeah. we're not looking at this, like, the, you know, we're, we're not looking at like some like DB group and in the NFL, they're like, man, those de- that defensive back group can lock anybody up. Uh, uh, you know, grants it grants an upgrade. You're hoping Josh green. I mean, we've talked about this. I feel like I'm a broken record on this now. Mm. You're hoping, I mean, Josh green's your only really point of attack defender. If you want to, you know, Exum, Derek Jones Jr., but they're kind of further down the depth chart, probably. For sure. Um, so it's like you're hoping Josh takes another big leap. You got Grant in there. Omax is a rookie in a perfect world. I mean, that's why they tried to go out and get a Thibel. Because then it's yeah. like, all right, Thibel, Grant Williams, Josh Green. And then we kind of have these like flyer-ish guys this year in those in the rest of the guys. So I still think they're missing at least probably one for some depth or you in an ideal world, there's a, there's another guy in there that's established as established as Grant Williams as a perimeter defender. Um, that's why in the perfect world, you know, they would have probably loved to have shipped off Tim instead of Reggie in that, in that deal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Cause that would have been, that would have been great now looking at the wings, but they couldn't. And, uh, yeah, so better than last year, but not, I wouldn't say, in the top eight of perimeter defending groups. Tim instead of Reggie in that deal would have changed so much because then you, you don't have a problem with Curry and, Hart, and Hardy and Tim. Mm-hmm. Now you have these three shooters that don't really defend that well and you're trying to figure out what to do with them. And instead you would have you know shooters and a, a bunch of wing defenders, Grant Williams, Josh Green, Reggie, Maxi, Omax, Derek Jones Jr., excellent. Like you would have just had a bunch of different – Wing defenders to throw out there. Another point of attack defender. For sure. You have Reggie and Josh then. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Between Josh Green and, and Omax, if one of those guys pops and takes a, a leap or Omax comes into the, the NBA and is, is ready to go right away and we're like, oh, dang. Could either of those leap-type moves change how you feel about the wing rotation? Uh, it'd have to be Josh, I think, more than more than Omax. Um it, it, just because Josh is, I think he's just going to have all the opportunity in the world. I think this is the biggest moment in his career yeah. right now. Um, you know, however you want to read into McMahon's answer yesterday, when I asked him about the extension, he's like, you know, I don't even want to paraphrase it. Cause I just listen to how he just said that about the movement on that obviously hasn't happened yet. Um, let's say that they go into the season. They don't have a deal yet then it, I mean, it's a hundred percent the biggest moment in his career because he's probably going to get every shot there is to be the starting 
three, if you want to say that, yeah. um, on this team and to guard the other point guards and have that like prominent to take over for Reggie Bullock. And we know how important Reggie was. So that's that's why I like he's the single. I mean, we did this pod last week of like the players that need to take a you know, leap, or maybe that was this week. And like it need. <laughs> It for, it has to be Josh. Like it would mean the most for this team if Josh took that next step, solidified that starting spot, and became like a lockdown defender on opposing point guards while hitting a three consistently, playing calmer on the floor. Like I'd just be massive for this team. Doing his passing thing that he does, the oil to the offense a little bit. Like the- I would sacrifice the flashy passing if it meant like you become an incredible three and D guy who can also, because we know he can like put it on the floor. Like it's never been a pro- about him dribbling. It's never been like Dorian early in his career. is like, All right, can't, right. are you dribbling? Don't please don't dribble or like Wes Matthews, but he could do that. We just got to see, he's got to take a step in the other area. You're just saying Wes Matthews just had all the flooding of, of like Kirk and people like, like posting Stanley. the posting the Stanley from the office <laughs> gif every time Wes Matthews did anything. Oh my gosh, that that's such a throwback. Yeah, it is. Because I, I don't expect Derek Jones Jr. to take that kind of leap or XM to take that kind of leap. Maybe he yeah. comes in and he's solid and you say, Oh man, they they got another guard that can defend and you you're feeling good about him. Maybe XM comes in and, and shoots a three right away, but I don't think they could take a leap like Josh Green could take a leap and make you yeah. feel better about this wing rotation. Exum versus versus Seth Curry I've, and Jaden Hardy, yeah. but more more Seth is going to be fascinating to me because it's going to be this like battle of Seth is one of the best shooters in the league, but obviously we know he struggles defensively. Dante could step in, and if he really has, and like if that shot has translated and that's part of his game now, and he's hitting it consistently, it would not shock me at all if he's playing over Seth hands down because. It would make sense then because then you could have a Dante Exum, another guy out there. When Josh is off the floor, he would, you know, he could play alongside Luca or Kyrie if he's hitting that three that can guard other defenders, you know, other point guards. Maybe it's Exum and Derek Jones Jr. who we talk about minutes, minutes versus minutes for. Yeah, that's fascinating. Because if one because yeah. one of those guys could could pop because Derek Jones Jr. has played solid for some good teams. XM has spent. Give some me time this weekend. Let me let me talk to some people this weekend, then I'll make my <laughs> bet. <laughs> Derek Jones Jr. has also been out there for a while, but XM wasn't even in the NBA last year, so it's <laughs> exactly yeah. So they're both kind of on equal footing when it when it comes to that. Do you have any big questions about this wing rotation? Uh, I mean, I feel like three point shooting is going to come down for a lot of it. You know, I mean, you could make the you could make the case that. You know the three point shooting for Josh, for Omax, for Derek Jones Jr. I mean, Excellent. for Dante Exum. I mean, those are four dudes that, depending on how how efficiently they're shooting it from three, might determine their spot in the rotation. And you know, so I mean, if Derek Jones Jr. comes in, and starts hitting, you know, thirty six percent from three, you're like, what the crap is this? <laughs> um, but like, what if Omax steps in day one and he's draining threes in yeah. training camp and it, you can't keep him off the floor at that point. So then he's going to be locked into that one of those first guys off the bench, backing up Grant Williams and all of that. And I've seen some people throw out there. I mentioned this on the Grant Williams spot of, well, why can't Grant be the three and Omax be the four? Well, somebody's got to guard the smaller guys. And Grant has openly talked about how he struggles with that. Is Omax quick enough to guard the smaller guys? I know he chased around Jordan Hawkins and some of these guys in, in college, but is he a point of attack guy that you could throw him out there in his length on some of the other point guards? I, I don't know. I mean, I've seen a decent amount of him in college, but it's not like I had, you know, Marquette league pass for, you know, the, all those months. So I, we just got to see that and see what, what he can, he can do defensively. That's where I'm, I worry about him fouling. We've talked a lot about Derek Lively fouling. Oh, that's yeah. why I would worry about Omax fouling because you're, you're chasing around screens. Navigating screens is a real skill that Dorian and Reggie had to learn in the NBA. And that's where it would take the next level. And also to your point, we, we talk a lot about Grant Williams, not being good at guarding the point of attack. He's really good at guarding bigs. I mean, he shuts down Joel Embiid <laughs> at time when they play, like he's got something Giannis. 
He's got something on him, and he, he guards Giannis, right? He's got something on these guys, and he's really good at that. And the Mavericks haven't had guys like that. You know, Dorian wasn't, I don't even think, was was that great at that, but they put him out there, and he was the best option on the floor. Um, Maxi was probably their, their best one at, at times. Now you have two of those guys that can guard bigger guys like that. you, you so, got to have Grant at the four, and, that, and that's to. what makes him so – when I did that pod a few weeks ago, what makes him so such a unique player in the league and a unique player for Dallas because they just haven't had that bigger body physical yeah. wing in a long time. I mean, you could say Wes Matthews maybe, but he was small, a little smaller. Um, but he just has to play the four. And the four is this. I was reading this whole thing the other day about how the four is one of the harder positions in basketball for teams to like find right now and like find the the right piece if it's not a star. Just because that position has changed so much, you know, some people are out there inventing positions, you know, and <laughs> should, probably shouldn't even call it a four anymore. And uh, talk soon. Cam, Cam Reddish is going to. Well, you look like, at some of the, the the best teams in the NBA, Bucks, it's Giannis, Celtics, it's like Tatum or Brown, uh, you know, Denver, Aaron Gordon was just a great find at, at the four. Memphis, it's Jaron Jackson Jr. <laughs> Jaron Jackson Jr. is mm-hmm. their, their four. Uh, the Kings kind of kind of struggled to find somebody like that, but I guess like Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes kind of became that. Um, Let me disgracing HB like that. The Suns, Kevin Durant. I mean, that's their four. I mean, like you said, it's got to either be a star or uh, you find a big wing like a Harrison Barnes or you know Grant Williams or somebody like that. And the Mavs have that yeah. now. Lakers, it's LeBron. I mean, <laughs> that's their four. Yeah. So there you go. Let us know what you expect from from Derek Jones Jr. Maybe maybe weigh in on the Derek Jones Jr. versus Exum conversation hmm. that we had a little bit there. Um, sure, that's gonna fire up the <laughs> <laughs> the chat. <laughs> the chat is Let's on know. fire now. Exum Jones Jr. debate they're, right they're now. They're arguing back and forth right now. Coming up next on Undisputed. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps. Peace out. <laughs> Moonshine. <laughs> Boom. <laughs>